Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How are you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. I got something really cool for you guys today. We're going to basically make very simple version of lighting. And uh, yesterday I sat uh, and I was working on these, uh, these um, shaders and I got them pretty much done. So don't worry, this looks like magic voodoo magic but we'll talk about it uh, in a little while might be a little mini series uh, so there are two new files called the vertex shader and the fragment shader and i'll explain these just like i said but there's some basic things we got to do in the game before we get started so i i messed up some kind of github thing so um a few of my images might be gone from the files and folders but as soon as i merge these and sync them it should be fine uh, anyway, it does work right now, just as it should, it looks just like normal. Uh, but to get this lighting to work, we're going to have to use something called a shader in SFML. All right, And it's not the same thing, if you're working with 3D, it is it is the same thing, but it's a very, very old version of that thing. So the, the GLSL, which is the programming language used in these uh, shaders, uh, is, is very old. All right, It's not the modern core version that we use today. Uh, so... You're going to have to bear with me on that. Uh, but it's just used for very simple lighting. So uh, it's not going to be any big deal. Big issues here. But to get started, we're going to need a shader. All right. And we're going to have to load these shader files into that shader and compile it. And uh, SFML kind of does this for you in OpenGL when you're working with raw OpenGL. You have to do everything yourself pretty much. But here it, it pretty much does it for you. It has this wrapper class, which you would otherwise make by yourself. So let's go into GameState.h. And <clears throat> we have pretty much everything here. We got the render sprites and everything, P menu. I'm pretty much gonna put my shaders here. So shader, I'm just gonna call it core shader, all right? Because usually it's it's a very basic shader used for pretty much everything. Uh, if you want a shader, a different type of shader, you can make several ones here and you can use different ones when you're rendering different things. Uh, so that's what's so cool about this. But I'm going to, pretty much have my core shader like this. It's pretty much finished here. You don't have to do anything else. Um, then I'm going to create a little function in gamestate.h here. I'm just going to put it below p menu player init player pause menu. Pretty much going to put it here void init shaders. Okay. Define this. Hopefully it will let me define it. <clears throat> For some reason it won't game state uh where did i put it in it players right before players pretty much here okay and then void game state okay now to initialize the shader all you have to do is this core shader dot load from file you can either load these one at a time or there is a constructor where or a function where you can load both the vertex and the fragment shader at the same time. Now, I'm not going to go through exactly what shaders are in these two, in these videos because, I mean, you probably want to look that up on my OpenGL series or something where I really explain what a shader is. But basically, all you need to know is a very natural thing for your graphics card to use, all right? So your graphics card has a bunch of cores um, and <clears throat> like thousands of cores which process pixels very fast right and shaders are small executable programs uh, vert there you go uh, which you can run on these cores that's basically what a shader is and all, all just every application every 3d application you see uses shaders even sfml uses shaders in the background when you don't see this shader class here is just so you can kind of make your own and if you don't want to you don't have to since they remove that complexity from your hands in sfml so you don't have to make your own shaders they have their own um, but if you want to make them you can make them just like this uh, fragment shader dot frag now these sound complicated but it's not vertex shader is just a shader that takes care of all the points in a in an object like a square or a triangle or you know rather a polygon it's called but you know just to simplify a, a shape basically it has all these points where it draws lines in between right to make the shape 
and then you fill it with fragments, with pixels. So the vertex shader kind of outlines it and takes care of all these four points. And then that graphics card processes those points and gives you a bunch of fragments, it's called, a bunch of pixels contained in that object. And, and it's through a process called interpolation. So from these four points, you can create all these smaller points inside the object. That's by using interpolation. And just go ahead and check out those words and stuff, and I'm pretty sure you'll un you'll understand. So that's how the graphics card works in stages. This is a pipeline, basically. You could check out the graphics pipeline, and you'll see how that works. And you'll see that these two are very much required. So once this is loaded from file, okay, this pretty much gives a boolean. So I'm just going to do an if statement here. If it's loaded and the good thing with SFML is if it doesn't load and you don't have a shader to go and it's some error it will still render it with the basic shader so you'll still get some render but you'll get an output that says there was an error um, STD C out that's why I can just do a C out here error game state uh, could not load shader something like that doesn't matter just so we know that the shader, there was some error with the shader files. Um, so there you go. I wish I had shown you how to create these, but it's very simple. You just make a new file file, and you name them frag and vert afterwards, depending on which shader it is. Um, and then pretty much the code is here. You can find the code in GitHub, but I'll go through it just quickly. Um, and let me see if I'm even recording here. All right, six minutes in. All right, we're good. Might be a little longer video. Um, but once that shader is done and it's loaded for file, I just want to run this. I want to see if it can load that shader for me without any errors. And I'm loading in a game state. So yeah, it did load the shader. No big deal. We have a little character here running around. And that's great. So we have that shader loaded. Now we can pretty much use it. But there's one thing we got to do before we start using our shader. And that is to make our map draw correctly okay the tile map should render correctly depending on the size of the screen but right now I can't go into that detail so we're just gonna kind of hacks fix it right now for our the size of our screen so I'm gonna go into my render here and I'm pretty much gonna make sure the X is let's add let's add uh, 8 to everything so 8 plus 4 is 12 I'm pretty sure 8 plus 5, that is, hmm, let's see, 5, that's 13, right? That doesn't make any sense, though. 8 plus 4 is 12, yeah, 13. Hmm, it's going to be a little weird, I think, but we'll see. Um, and the position here, let's add 5 to it, so 8 and then 10. So I just want to make sure that it's rendering the map and there's no kind of pop-ins from from the corners so you'll see that there's still gonna be some pop in here so we need to increase that and probably on this side it should be yeah since you can move this as well you're gonna have to add some okay the, the bottom looks fine that looked fine no one more okay bottom one more top one more okay so let's add one more to these 11 and uh, nine here and then we're gonna add maybe three more to these so 15 and 16 and let's run this again it's gonna be a little tedious but we're gonna have to do this and okay okay what if I keep it centered here let's see if it looks all right okay then that looks okay since we're gonna have some lighting and stuff okay that looks fine <coughs> let's see Okay, yeah, that's just almost perfect. So is that, I think. Oh, that is a little too much, I think, at the bottom. And the top. Okay, top is top is pretty good. Okay, bottom was... <coughs> excuse me. I think one too much. So we'll just leave it at this, these numbers here. That looks fine. <coughs> okay. Once that's done... We still got a little bit of time. So now we can start checking this out. Now I, I want to go through these with you, but I, I, I'm sure you want to see the cool effects 
before I go through these with you. I don't, I'm not sure, but if I, if I know correctly, you probably want to see it working first. Um, so the core thing is going to be, if we want our player to be affected with the light and you want your tiles to be affected, everything is going to be, have, have to be rendered with this shader for, for it to work. Okay, so you can't just render one thing with it. You're going to render everything you want to be affected by lights is going to have to be rendered by this shader. Uh, so we're going to have to go down to our entity, entity.h. Here we have our show hitbox. Remember, we have a default value on one of these here. Show hitbox. Uh, I think it's on player CPP. Anyway, anyway, yeah, we want to put the shader here, basically. So. I'm going to say SF shader pointer shader. Okay. Like this. And we're an entity dot H. So you don't have to do anything else. You just do that and you go in here and you pretty much, you probably don't need these def definitions anyway. So I'm just going to remove that like that. And we're going to go into player and here we go. Okay. I'm going to put it right here a shader pointer and here is the yeah is the default value okay sf shader shader equals null so we'll have no shader by default okay this is very important because if we don't have a shader we just want to render it regularly we don't want to render it you know with with something but i think i'm pretty sure that you can send in the shader anyway, and SFM will take care of it. So let's see. Uh, but you know what? We'll make the extra check anyway. If this, or if shader, if we have a shader, we're going to send it in. It, and then we're just going to say shader here. Okay? Just like that. Now it's probably going to complain for some reason. Um. Uh, Wait, I think it's since it's a pointer. Yeah, since it's a pointer, you don't need to give it that ampersand. Um, the hitbox, whatever, doesn't matter. Else, we don't want to render the hitbox with the shader, for example. We don't want it to be affected by light. So, there you go. Just do that. Uh, and once that's done, your player can be rendered with the shader. Okay. And... When we render it in the game state here, go down to game state, go down where you render your player, all the way down to render here. You can actually give it this core shader, okay? And, okay, that is a shader. Oh yeah, you need the ampersand here, since that's not a pointer. There you go. So once you do that, your player should be able to be rendered with the shader. If we run this, it should be pretty much no problems on it. It's just that, yeah, there should be a problem because we don't have a light. Whoops, my bad. We don't have the light thing. We're not sending in the correct things into player. So if you see in the vertex and fragment shader, you'll have something called uniforms. And these are basically variables being sent in from the outside to... To the shader okay and if we don't set these we're gonna have some issues so we're pretty much gonna have to set these the light this is a position all right i should probably call it light position um and then light pulse just like that and then we're gonna change it just one second don't worry too much about this i'm just gonna change it so that whoops so that you don't have any problems later okay Makes sense, makes sense. Uh, there we go. Okay, okay. Cool. All right. So, pretty much going to have to end the video here. But just to show you that it should be working, let's just say this. Let me just copy that. Don't remove it completely. Vec4. No, 1. Zero, zero, one. So let's run this. And let's see. Just give me a second here. All right. Uh, so I reset this back to what it was. 
Uh, and I got it to actually work because uh, I also removed the if statements around this draw thing. Um, but what the problem was obviously was that I wasn't initializing them right here. So you want to add this init shaders. I'm so dumb. Forgot all about that. So just add that. But just to show you that it works kind of, that it actually loads, we do get some error messages saying that we're not setting uniforms. And then that it uses the default. So it's still rendering the sprite. It's just that it says undefined variable light, implicit cast, blah, 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 undefined variable light. So it's kind of having some issues there in the fragment shader. Um, so light, let's just see where light is. Light right there, light position. So I'm just going to set that to everywhere where we have the light. Okay, so there you go. If we run it just one more time before we end. Just want to make sure that it actually, yeah, there you go. All right, so now we got some type of, since it says zero, zero, we got some type of thing going here, but it kind of failed to load the shader. But anyway, I'll check this out and we'll probably get it going in the next one, all right? Um, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully everything is working for you somewhat. In the next video, we'll have this finished pretty much uh, rendering the texture and everything. So, so there you go, guys and girls. Thank you so much. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. All right? Bye-bye.